makes me feel the most successful, makes me uh, make better choices about the jobs that I take or don't take, uh, and to get everything in my schedule. I was kind of laughing at the last question about the nine to five, because when you become self-employed, you know, the clock just doesn't stop. It starts before nine, it ends well after five, and it rolls into Saturday and Sunday. Um, so I think the thing that I see the most is it's about telling me, reminding myself of what my own story is. And what I'm going to tell you, you're going to think, you're not going to say anything about notary yet. No, I'm not. Uh, but this is what impacts my decisions about uh, the jobs I take and the way I move my business. So every day I tell myself my own story, um, how my life is going to be, how I want it to be. Um, I got inspired a few years back. I don't know if anybody on the call today remembers the movie The Help. If you saw that, uh, one of the actresses portrayed a maid who was taking care, it was a difficult time, um, and she uh, watched after a little girl uh, who was maybe about three-ish, and every day she was telling this little girl, you are smart, you are important, you are kind, uh, you are beautiful. And she would repeat these messages, building these tapes for this little girl. And I thought to myself, wow, when that little girl gets older, she's going to have a set of tapes that are going to run through her mind and through her head that says she has it within herself um, to make her life what she wants. She doesn't have to look to the outside to get that. Um, so I didn't grow up with that tape or set of tapes. I have different tapes that I grew up with and a lot of limiting beliefs that has caused me um, to go slower, uh, slower pace uh, to achieve what I want. Uh, so what I do now is one, I've created my own tapes over time to override those other ones um, and to help me move forward. So. Um, I think about what is it, why am I working so hard? Why am I doing all of this? And that's because I'm looking to have health uh, as I go forward uh, so that I can travel, so I can be with grandkids when I get them, so I can be free from ailments that might limit me from enjoying what I do today and what I want to do tomorrow, that I have enough wealth uh, so I'm not worried about meeting my financial obligations to pay for that travel or just your, you know, your bills and things that come up. I want to have time. I don't want to work this hard, you know, as things go forward uh, so that when opportunities are presented, I can join in. And ultimately that inner peace and acceptance of who I am, what I bring, and what it is that I have. So every morning, I start with the first minutes of the day, reminding myself of who I am, what I'm about. I start visioning what my day is going to look like. What's going to be scheduled for me? What kind of activities, jobs? And I see already myself as finishing them. I already imagine what I'm going to feel like and how great it's going to be as each one of those are accomplished. So some of those kinds of things that I actually do on a daily basis might be, how am I moving some of my income towards my future? Uh, what do I need to do to tend properties that I own so they stay desirable, safe, and occupied? Uh, what steps can I take to uh, alter, improve my business model so that I work smarter, not harder? Uh, and what, how do I need to tend my body and my mind in terms of movement, nutrition, uh, uh, reading articles, being inspired by other people who are in front of me? Uh, and some of the things I do is, for instance, I listen to TED Talks. I have a subscription to that, and I listen to various, sometimes they're just interesting uh, scientific studies. Uh, I just get so much uh, from them. Uh, and then Benjamin Hardy is somebody that I follow and he's a coach out there and he believes in that getting up morning story. Don't start with your emails and your phone. Start with directing your own life first. Um, Brian Tracy, he's been around forever. And when my kids were young, uh, I listened to his parenting and I've continued to listen to other um, uh, uh, programs that he's put out. Um, in the last few years, Brendan uh, Burchard has incredible, I started with this manifesto and then I continue to follow him. He has incredible things uh, that 
I, if I can take a nugget or a kernel of something that I think I can do that, I add it. Uh, and Tony Robbins was back in my early 20s. He's been around for a long time too. Um, so some of the things I do to stay on track to make those better decisions, to take those actions, uh, is one, I disconnect from my technology from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. My phone stays charging in the kitchen, my PCs are out in the office areas, and when I go to sleep at night, I am not gonna be responding to any of that. Uh, I have from 7 a.m. till 9 p.m., that's a lot of hours, to do that kind of thing. Uh, and I need to be able to reboot myself, and I can't if I stay connected and worry about you know, missing a call in the middle of the night. Um, I send myself to bed. You know, we send our kids to bed. I send myself to bed um, at a reasonable time every night so that I ensure I have enough sleep so I can reboot and start my day and make better decisions and choose what it is I'm going to use my time on because that's the only thing I have that everybody else has that's the same, right? What, how much time I have and how I'm going to use it. Um, I schedule me time in the day. That might be a Pilates class. That might be walking with a girlfriend or by myself. Uh, but it's time that I do not accept a job. Once I've scheduled that time for me, I, I pass on a job. I need to keep that uh, commitment to myself. Um, and then when I'm driving to job, to job, to job, I'm listening to books on CD. Now, this is my guilty pleasure. I listen to historical nonfiction, uh, mostly about presidents, past presidents. This is my, my big thing. Um, the last one I did was The First Conspiracy. That was about the plot to kidnap George Washington. Very interesting. Uh, may or may not have anything to do with my notary work today, but it helps like clear out my mind a little bit so that I'm not always focused on the same thing. Grant and Hamilton, not the play, but the actual autobiography. Um, these are ways that I help free up my mind. Um, the bottom line is when I do these things first, now I know what my day is because I've already scheduled it. And by the way, I didn't say it, but the night before I go to bed, I look to see what's my day look like tomorrow. Is there anything I need to be concerned about, prepared for? Did I overschedule something? Have I left room? Uh, and if I have room, what might I think about doing with that? So the next morning when I start telling my story, I know what the story is about. Um, and then as the day goes, Here's how I apply it. So as I get phone calls, I decide if that job is an appropriate job for me. Does it take me a step closer to my goal? If it's an unprofitable job, that may not be the step I want to take. Is it because it's a connection? Maybe this isn't about the money. Maybe this is about will this lead me uh, towards um, building the business that I'm working on as I vision it. When I was just doing the assignments, um, I needed to make sure I took good assignments, quality assignments, because I only had so many days, so many, so much time in my day to accomplish them. And if I took a bunch of little assignments, uh, I may not have been available to take a better assignment. Uh, it also impacts how I organize uh, my time, my thoughts, uh, and as I'm trying to uh, change my business. So our business will not always be what it looks like now. It can be if we don't take a look at the future. Where are the jobs going to come from? What kind of jobs do I really want to be working on? Uh, that is not going to change for you unless you actively participate in shaping it. And shaping it comes with making the connections. And um, another one, Berkus is another one I love to follow. He's all about networking. And he talks about, it's not about building your network, it's are you in, you're inside, you exist inside a network. It's are you a connector in that network? And you can't be a connector if you're not looking to see who do I know, who else do I know who might benefit from that person, and how do I set those things in motion? And I, you have to take the time to do it. If your time is all sucked up with jobs, from morning till night, uh, your, your business really won't be sustainable. And that's the thing I need to think about all the time is what is sustainable for me. Uh, and sometimes uh, it's just one little step that I made in one, in one particular day. And sometimes I take a leap and I think, holy crap, I'm not ready for this. It went too fast. And, and I'm kind of in that place now where I'm in a lot of flux and change as I'm trying to shape 
uh, what I want my business to be, you know, in the next five years. So um, telling myself a story every morning about what my life is and what I'm going to be participating in and what I'm not, um, looking ahead to see what can I do to help shape that. Uh, and then in, within the moment, uh, executing the work I committed to. Those are the big things that uh, need to happen for me every day. Okay, Bill? Yeah, wow. Well, Laura, you took this deep. I love it. And I love that you're so committed to your daily routine too because this is the stuff that you don't, we don't get to hear enough. And this is the stuff that really matters. The stuff that you just described, the affirmations, telling yourself the story, matching your vision to your daily decision. It's almost like a, a matrix for making a decision. I mean, this is my vision. Is it in alignment to take that job or to meet that person or to pursue this any further? It's, that's truly golden. And then you said one thing too, is the key commitments to yourself is what, and that's really what this comes down to is having your, having your dream and then taking action for it every day and honoring that every single day. I love um, that you shared this part of this because and like I was just saying, I got off track there a little bit. Uh, we don't hear it enough. You know, we hear the real practical stuff, the, the spotlight stuff, how to go out and make money. But a lot of the, there's a gap between our goals and where we are right now. And in this, in between is a lot of becoming that has to happen. Sometimes we're not the type of person who makes two or $300,000 a year at this business. We have to grow into that. We have to learn and the commitment to Kaizen, constant learning, growing, being introduced to different ways of thinking, different ways of doing things. All of that helps you become who you need to be to make that happen. I just love that. Got to do a course just on that part. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Now, okay, so I love, so mine is, um, uh, in, definitely in alignment. Obviously, I'm big into morning routines, guys. I've got the morning mastery course. It's included in Sign and Thrive. That's about the daily dues that I use to boost my business. You know, I went from making a thousand a month to making ten, twenty thousand a month in the first ninety days, and it's been able to go up pretty consistently since then. More importantly than the income, though, is the impact that it's had on my relationships. I've been able. I have way deeper relationships than I ever had before. Uh, because of some of the connecting and um, some of the tools that I implemented here. So I just created, this kind of came to me at three o'clock in the morning. I popped out of bed and I was like, oh, that's how I want to show this. So I'm going to share my screen here and show you what I mean here. So really what we're talking about when we say that we're working in our business or on our business is there's certain things that happen that make the most sense for us. It's real common sense. You know, the phone rings, it dings, we go do our thing. We're a notary. That's how we make money. We love um, to be booked because that means we're generating revenue. And I think uh, Laura, you kind of touched on this just a minute ago as well, that, being booked all day, every day is not sustainable for a couple different reasons. Number one, you'll probably burn out. If you're going to work this hard, if you're going to work towards a dream, uh, there has to be, you have to live too. You know, we're not living to work. We're working to dream and we just got to make some money doing it or, and hopefully we can do it as part of a business that we're extremely passionate about and be of service like this business has been great. But also, if you are booked that much, then there's a good chance that you're, you're not cultivating additional relationships. So if a resource or a source uh, goes out on you, uh, your flame burns out and then suddenly you have no business. So we've got to be, it's this constant balance between uh, doing what we're paid to do and then creating the intersection of those relationships and opportunities that further the business and further the dream. So one of my favorite quotes um, from an Under Armour commercial of all places is, it's what you do in the dark that puts you in the light. That was from that Michael Phelps Rule Yourself commercial. If you ever wanna just get inspired, I never wanted to swim in my life until I watched that commercial, but the, the message is, is huge. 
because what happens when nobody's watching? What happens at three o'clock in the morning, at four o'clock in the morning, with those daily dues that you know you have to do to move your business forward is what really makes or breaks your success. So as a mobile notary, the, uh, like my spotlight there, Laura, I see it, I can tell you do. The, uh, the stuff that we do in our business every day to make money in the spotlight is the general notary work, it's our loan sign, uh, signings, uh, if we're a wedding officiant, it's that, the ride share, the field inspections, it's the bookkeeping, the little daily day stuff that keeps our business rolling. This is what happens when the phone finally starts ringing and dinging. But this is all pretty reactionary stuff. So this is what happens when that phone does ring and ding. Uh, we're responding to emails, we're uh, just answering phone calls or text messages or whatever it might be. In the dark, that's the creative place. That's where we're gonna end up creating these intersections of people and opportunities that change everything. And I, I say it all the time, one person can change everything in this business for you. And I shall share with you, again, one story of a, a little $75 refinance I was doing because I, I did not follow my older self advice and I undercut a competitor to get refinance pricing. So I was doing refinances for 75 bucks and I was driving all over the place to do that. And I had a great attitude about it because they kept me nice and busy. But I went to this one, it was all the way across town, $75 for this refinance. Her dog almost bit me when I walked in the door. We laughed about it though, it was fun. We ended up just laughing and having this really great time. The signing lasted probably 20 minutes, but I hung out for probably another 25, 30 minutes and just talked to her and her husband. At the end of it, she stood up and she shook my hand. She goes, by the way, I'm the manager of such and such title. I love the way you handle these signings. Will you please come over and do all of our signings for us? And that client ended up being a $100,000 a year client, just like that. So one person, you never know where it's going to be. You never know who's sitting across from the table from you. So keep that in mind as we do this, because that's what this is all about. Number one, uh, and if you've watched my uh, morning mastery course, you see my daily dues, a lot of this is drawn from that, because those are the things that I do every single day to make sure my business is moving forward. First of all, is you've got to have a contact list. This is where you're going to be managing your database. Your net worth equals your network. This, most people, especially notaries, don't put a whole lot of value on their contact list yet. Number one, they devalue their a personal network as it is, but it's hard to see the big picture as a one-man operation. But what I'm talking about here is like the 1%, like perform, doing extraordinary, getting extraordinary results by doing extraordinary things. If we just did ordinary things, then you might still be able to make forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year at this. You might still love your business. And that's the beautiful thing about this business is it can be whatever you need it to be. But if you have hopes and expectations of this business being a, a vehicle to really make some amazing things happen for your life, you're going to have to do some things that are out of the ordinary. They are extraordinary. So managing your contact list is one of those things. And then researching the people that are on that list is also important. So it's not just a list that's sitting there on your desk, it's actually something that you're cultivating and using, researching so you, we can find better ways to connect authentically. What is an authentic connection? I kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but it's not a bulk email that you're sending out to a thousand different people about how great your notary services are. I mean, that is all wonderful and great and it's great to be great. But what people want to hear on the other side is probably more about them than it is you. One thing I encourage you to do is always remember that there's a human being on the other side of that email. Behind that name badge is a human being that has the same hopes, fears, and dreams that you do. They've got awesome things going on in their life. They want to share that with somebody. They want somebody to help participate in that. And maybe they have some, you know, some turmoil going on too, and they just want an ear or some, some support for that or a resource that you might be able to provide for them. 
So we're going to go a lot deeper than just a sales email. One of my favorite ways, as we talked about a little bit earlier as well, is sending out greeting cards. When I first committed to my notary business, like I said, this is it. I got to have this business work or I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I was making $1,000 a month. I had one client that was paying me about $1,000 a month for my loan signing services. But that was not, my rent was $1,000 a month. There's just no way that I could survive on that. So I had to make something happen. I went crazy on this and I sent out 10 greeting cards a day just to people in my network, not necessarily like sales. They were not sales emails. They were congratulations emails. They were thank yous. They were um, sorry for your loss emails. They were, hey, I haven't seen you in a long time. I miss you kind of, uh, not emails, I'm sorry, greeting cards. So Consider everybody on your contact list, that's personal and business, all of those are fair game for your greeting cards. This is all about relationships, not always about the business relationships. You'll, it'll blow your mind who in your network wants to love and support you in this business. They all know somebody in real estate. So when you start building these connections, it unfolds across the board. Meetings, I used to despise meetings. I'm not really a huge fan of them right now, but when you do use them correctly, like stacked meetings and networking events, where's my networking? Oh, I don't know. We'll come back to it. But networking events, just like Laura was saying, networking is not networking for the sake of networking. It is about participating in your network. It is connecting people to each other. Uh, supporting them, asking them how they can, how you can support them. I think we put a lot of pressure on ourselves when we go to a networking meeting that we we have to talk about us all the time, and it doesn't have to be like that. That's kind of the old-fashioned way of doing it. Sure, we have to introduce ourselves, introduce our business, so people know why we're in the room. But you can flip that conversation when we start asking, "How can I support your business?" Changes everything. Laura, I love that you touched on this too, skill development. This is one of the most critical components of the success of your business because contrary to popular belief, we are not born knowing everything that we need to know to be a success in business. Leaders are not born, successful entrepreneurs are not born, they are created, they create themselves. Your skill development is 100% your responsibility. It's not like we graduated high school or some, some people graduated college and you got the key to the world and everything works for you. Skill development still has to be continued. There are things that we need to know in this business. And a lot of you, if you're participating uh, with coaching from Laura, if you're in my Sign and Thrive course, or if you're in the Notary to Pro course, you're already doing this. You're learning to hone your craft. And there's other things that you can be doing too. There's certain skill sets. We're going to need to know maybe how to build a website, maybe how to optimize a website. We're going to need to know maybe to speak in public or speak better in public. Maybe Toastmasters International is for us. Um, maybe some of those TED Talks that teach us um, social uh, intelligence or emotional intelligence, how to connect with people, how to generate curiosity how to network in a meeting, all of that stuff that serves us, we actually have to schedule. You have to schedule your learning into your day. There is no someday, guys. It just never is going to come. I know we all have this list. You're like, someday I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn Toastmasters or someday I'm going to learn how to write a blog. It doesn't exist. We have to schedule it. We have to start learning now. And whether you learn from books uh, TED Talks, YouTube, anything you would ever want to know in the world, you could learn on YouTube these days. So, but you have to block out a little bit of time. And I share, um, I shared it on my Instagram uh, the other day. I actually schedule uh, my learning. Right now, I'm taking the uh, Sandra Long's LinkedIn Personal Best course. I schedule that at noon every day, just 15 minutes where I make progress on that. I've been doing that for three months, and I love where my LinkedIn profile is going. Now I've started the quick, on, um, quick reading program so I can learn to read faster and implement some of this knowledge. I got this wall of books behind me and half of them are still unread. So I'm taking a speed reading course so I can read more of them and implement. 
Uh, before that, I had the Rockstar Academy, uh, which taught me how to dive deep in my vision. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to Brendan Burchard's High Performance Academy. It's a four-day seminar. It happens to be based here in Phoenix. Though That's the learning, so I can learn more of the success habits that I need to get myself to the next level. That's the level of skill development that you have to take on. It's overwhelming. It's huge, and nobody else is doing it. That's because that's ordinary. You want to be extraordinary, you have to do extraordinary things. Also, this unglamorous social media, for about 20 minutes a day, um, I would get on Facebook mainly because that's all I knew how to use back then. And I would, it would allow you to, be, uh, to operate on Facebook as your business page. So I would be, uh, whatever name I had back then, I had so many, I had Notary Blue, I had William Sorokin Notary Public, whatever it was. And I would go through and I would visit other pages and I would comment and uh, ask questions as that page. And it helped generate some movement on my social media. And Gary Vaynerchuk actually swears by this. This was his million dollar um, strategy. Now he spent six to seven hours a day doing that. I only had 20 minutes a day, but I still got some movement and some success with that. And on the social media stuff, guys, this is not, I'm not necessarily talking about advertising, like constantly, I'm a notary, notary for you, 24 hour notary and that kind of stuff. That has its place and it serves its purpose. But I encourage you to share your journey. People love hearing how much you love your job. If you're out traveling, if you're making, you know, traveling one or 200 miles that day, or you've met an interesting client that you want to talk about, or in a beautiful neighborhood, or whatever it is, share that journey. That gets a lot more traction, and it sticks in people's minds a lot more than an advertisement. The Tom method that I call is top of mind. All of this that we're talking about here, um, staying connected with people, sending greeting cards, pinging them, chatting with them, sending uh, a quick email, hello, staying in touch basically is a top of mind method. That's the whole idea. Keep us top of mind with our clients. I think there's this part of us that almost takes it personally if an uh, escrow officer or a signing company doesn't have us top of mind for their loan signings. But they've got everything that we've got going on, it's going on inside their head too, maybe more. And it's very easy for that to slip. So it's our responsibility to keep us in front of them and that we do that by adding value to their lives so we can do that by sharing our journey we can do that with the thank you cards we can ping we can tag in articles that might be of interest to them we can write articles that might be of interest to them and i think there's my networking that's my writing content one there is so much power if you're not a if you don't think you're a good writer you might be better than you think but that's a skill that you can hone and you can get better at Writing original content is going to bring attention to your blog, to your social media posts, so it's worth learning. It's worth thinking outside the box on this. We've got our, our primary clientele has one of the 10 most stressful jobs in the United States. What do stressful people need? There's all kinds of resources that we can write, rewrite, share, tag people in, whatever it is. We can be of value and service outside of stamping a document with our ideal customers. And then finally, search engine optimization. If you're planning to do general notary work or any of those other skill sets, field inspections, um, wedding officiant, did I say that already? Um, general notary work, anything that's not loan signings is going to require some sort of an optimized website so people can find you. If there's not a database of people who do what you do, you're going to need consumers to find you. So you're gonna to need to learn search engine optimization. It's too expensive <coughs> and there's too much gray area to pay somebody for a notary. I mean, it's upwards of 1,500 a month, sometimes two or $3,000 a month. So it's a skill set that you wanna hone and develop, but you don't have to do it all in 30 days. It can be a, a lifetime of education, just schedule it in your day so you can learn that stuff and slowly optimize your site. Invest the time, anything worthwhile is gonna be worth the time here. 
And then of course I have the signing companies. If you're not going escrow direct, that's totally okay. That's the beautiful thing about this business. But sign up with enough signing companies to get your phone ringing and dinging. That might be 100, that might be 150 of them to get yourself started and get the experience that you need. Build that into your day. It's overwhelming if you see 150 signing companies and think I gotta sit down and do all this. Schedule one a day, two a day, five a day, whatever works for you, just schedule it into your day so you're constantly making progress on your goals. The idea here is just consistent action all day, all day, every day. You're moving forward. One of the most beautiful parts of the morning mastery and uh, the daily routine that I put in with my daily dues is I could rest my head at night knowing that even before eight o'clock in the morning, I had done everything that I needed to do to move my business forward. Everything else that happened after that was more of this reactionary stuff, right? I was responding. Because I did all this stuff to get the phone to start ringing and dinging, and then between 8 and sometimes 10, 8 and 11 at night, the phone's ringing and dinging, and I am making my money. But all of this still has to be getting done. But someone in some time. Now, Laura, I, um, I have my book list next, so I'm going to share um, four books that I recommend – uh, reading. And then if, if you have your list, I'd love for you to chime in at the end here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this was uh, actually one of the hardest decisions that I had to make is choose just four books that I would recommend uh, that you, that you read. Uh, because I have tons of favorites and there's lots with specialties, but this would be just like a starting point if you wanted to, to get in touch with the, the big picture and get set a track to become who you want to be or who you need to be to make those dreams come true. So the first one, of course, The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod, one of my absolute favorite books. This was a life changer for me. His, uh, his acronym, SAVERS, um, gave me a reason to wake up early because I was one of those guys that was not an early morning riser. I was like, what am I going to do if I wake up early anyway? You know. So what I wake up an hour or two hours early, what do I do? His savers uh, speak to that right away, and it's right in alignment with what Laura was talking about. There's the silence in meditation. There's affirmations. There's visualization, exercise, breathing, and writing, or scribing as he calls it. Those six practices changed everything in the first 30 days. I became, my self-confidence skyrocketed, and that's when the daily dues were born. Next one. Huge, if, you want, if you're looking to develop authentic relationships, seven levels of communication can do that for you. Michael J. Mayer wrote this. He's actually, I just missed him in Phoenix last week. He was here, uh, still on a speaking circuit. The book is written towards the real estate industry. In fact, it's written for real estate agents, but it applies right to our business too. We're on the fringe of real estate anyway. When you start implementing those practices, and this is where it really dives deep into unbranded um, correspondence, like sending cards that are not branded with your name, not including the business card, and it kind of explains the value of all that. Highly recommend it. Start with Why by Simon Sinek. When we know why we're doing things, it makes the work, it changes your whole attitude about uh, the day-to-day -day work, what it takes. The, this job is not always easy. No dream is easy. There are going to be days when you don't want to get out of bed. There are days when you want to quit. But when you know why you're doing this, you won't stop. And finally, this one um, is called The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. And if you, if you own that your business is your masterpiece, then this book will call to you because this is about the resistance and all the crap and the excuses that we start making up. It's about um, everything that is going to come up and try to prevent you from being a success in your business. Uh, short read, but highly, uh, very powerful. Laura, are you still with us? Unmute. Uh, there you go. <laughs> yes, I am still uh, with you. Um, taking notes, as I'm sure other people are, uh, as well. And uh, I am not as much a whole book reader as I am getting small pieces at a time. Mm. So I had mentioned the TED Talks. 
yeah. uh, go go there on the uh, and um, you know they have the YouTube station and you can see what the different you can actually get recommendations based on what you're interested in. So I picked about four different things I was interested in. One is business related. One was um, uh, scientific studies. Another one was communication. Another one was connection. And so they send me recommended TED Talks based in those areas. So I don't have to spend my time, first of all, searching for something. Um, they send things that are in my area of interest. So highly recommend it. And some of the people who have um, written these books uh, and somebody did uh, – chat about it. Uh, Simon has a TED Talk. So you can get a feel for that. And then you might want to go ahead and get uh, his book. Um, the other ones, I'm a follower. Uh, as I said, Benjamin Hardy, Brian Tracy, Brendan Burchard, Tony Robbins, um, Berkus. I can't think, I don't know why I can't think of his first name right now. Um, but every day I get something from them. And you know, it's just a five minute read, 10 minute read, something to see uh, am I still in alignment with what I want to do? Did I learn something new? Oh, I didn't realize I could try it that way. Sometimes it helps me build some of the skill sets I'm looking for. Um, and I can digest them in small pieces. And so that's what I like about uh, following somebody, a coach or a mentor out there, um, listening to their um, YouTube station. Uh, and that uh, is not overwhelming for me. What happens for me sometimes with the books, I get the book and then you're, you're right. It sits on the shelf. I'm like, oh, I got to make time. I've only read a chapter. It's great, but I can't get back to it. And I like to do more than one thing at a time. I don't think it's, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, when you're trying to do too many things at the same time uh, that you're split up. But I do better with little pieces of a lot of different things. Yeah. Uh, and I come back around and around and around to it until the fifth or sixth time I hear on that particular topic, I think, oh, I get it now. So I don't have a list of books, but I do have the people that I listed that I followed uh, that uh, really help me every day. Just take that, to be 1% better. If I could just be 1% better over time, it's going to happen. Well, that's the beautiful thing about this too is, you know, this is the, the long game, right? So it's comp like compounding interest. 1% times 1% times 1% every day, it keeps adding up. And suddenly you become someone you never, you wouldn't even recognize sometimes, but it's the type of person that can make those big dreams come true. So I love it. Thank Laura. Thank you so much for sharing so much of yourself today, guys. Thank you for joining us and growing yourself. And your business today. I hope that was helpful, and I'll get the replay out to you as soon as possible. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye.